A special Stuart 5A steam engine repair part 5. Machining and refitting the big end brasses. But before I do that, I'm going to apply the rule, measure twice and cut once. Just like I did in the first episode with my micrometer, I check the diameter of the crank pin. The crank pin should be 3 quarters of an inch in diameter, but it measures just over 15 thou less than that. Over now to the lathe, I'm going to make a plug gauge, which will be exactly the same size as the current crank pin size, and I'm going to use this as a reference. So once I start to machine the big end brasses for this crank pin, I'll be able to test the diameter accurately using the plug gauge. I don't have to make this part, I could use a pair of calipers, or a digital caliper, or even a special tool to do the job, but this is an easier, simple, foolproof way of doing it. Well it would have been if I'd have made the thing right in the first place, I took too much off and it was a tiny bit too small, so I've turned it round in the chuck and this time I'm going to be more careful. This needs to be exactly the size of the crank pin that's in the engine and not a bit smaller. I was speaking with a friend of mine the other day and we were discussing engineering terms. The micrometer measures in thousandths of an inch, but then in between these divisions there are other hidden measurements. Measurements like the nudge, or the smidgen, and when you get even smaller, you get down to cat's cock hair, and possibly even smaller than that, and that's dick. In this clip I'm making some marks at one end of the piece of bar, to make sure that I get it the right way around when I use it as a plug gauge. I'm fitting the big end brasses into the chuck, and tapping them firmly into place using a soft hammer. It's vital that this hole that I'm going to bore through this blank is exactly at 90 degrees to the square part of the brasses. The round part of the brasses is not accurate, this has suffered from a bit of heat distortion. There are many different ways to do this job, but I've done it this way because I thought it through. One viewer commented that if he had been doing the job, he would have drilled out the pieces of phosphor bronze first. Yes, I suppose you could do that. The reason I had to do it this way though was for a specific reason. You've just seen me tap the brasses in place into the chuck, and by drilling out the pieces of phosphor bronze once they're fitted into the brasses, the pressure of the drill against the work is desirable, as the pressure of the drill going through the brasses keeps them in place against the chuck jaws. Now I've moved over to a boring bar, there's not much pressure being put on the job, and the pressure isn't all straightforward, it's from side to side. During this boring process, I'm not calculating the diameter using the hand wheel verniers. I'm taking very fine cuts and checking the cuts at the beginning of every cut using the plug gauge. I start off by removing just a smidgen of metal, but on the final cut I'm removing no more than a gnat stick. The plug gauge fits perfectly in this small part that I've bored, so now I can bore it at the same setting all the way down. To get the best possible finish, what I normally do is, once I've bored the cylinder or the bearing like this, I then reverse the direction of the traverse and pull the boring bar back out of the work the other way, in exactly the same way that I did when I was cleaning out the original damaged brasses. This gives a really good finish to the bearing. It's most important though to make sure you do not accidentally turn the hand wheel, otherwise it will be radically oversized. And now's the time to try the plug gauge. The fit is perfect, just how I wanted it. It's most important to make sure that this part is the correct dimension. If it doesn't fit on the crank pin perfectly, it will be very difficult to get it to run through in the chuck to remove some more metal. What I'm doing here using some oil on a piece of wet dry sandpaper is just removing the edges, just removing any burrs that are left by the machining process. In this clip, I'm cleaning up the connecting rod, which is made from steel, using a piece of Scotch-Brite. And now it's the moment of truth. I'm separating the two brasses, and I'm going to fit them along with the connecting rod to the crank pin. Before I go any further though, I'm pumping some oil from the central journal to make sure it comes through the hole in the crank pin, and it does, it's flowing very freely. With the connecting rod on top of the first brass, and with the numbers that are stamped on the components facing away from me, just like the other side, I can refit the brasses to the crank pin. If you look where the stud comes through the brass, you will see there is no tolerance, it's a tight fit. And it's also a tight fit on the other side, engineering at its best really. In this clip, I'm fitting the nuts that hold the lower brass in place. 
If you find yourself doing a job like this, I'd just like to mention that it is very important not to over-tighten these studs. It isn't a car engine. This is a soft piece of gun metal. Over-tightening these studs will make the gun metal distort, and the last thing I want at this stage is a tight bearing on this shaft. This bearing will need re-running in, and I will readjust the tightness of these studs once I've run the engine for a while. As it turns out though, they're feeling okay. i fitted the lock nuts, and here we are. I'm going to start the running in process even before I reassemble the rest of the engine, just by moving the big end bearing back and forth on the crank pin. And I think I can engage smug mode with this because it really is a very good bearing fit. I'm going to be flooding this bearing with oil during the running in process. This does two things. A surplus of oil is good for the bearing, and as the bearing runs in, the oil also helps carry away any particles. And that's it for this episode. I will continue doing this for some time. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.